guys, so I am filming this at entirely the wrong time of day to light it by the sun, and it's cloudy out, so sorry if the lighting is Fifty Shades of Fucked Up. Speaking of Fifty Shades, there was a better transition to put in there, but I didn't use it. I used that. Speaking of Fifty Shades, what I want to talk about today is Guilty Pleasures. Fifty Shades is not one of my guilty pleasures. I want to be very clear before we start this. That was an example only to make a funny haha joke. I don't like Fifty Shades of Grey. Guilty pleasures are exactly what they sound like. They are things that you enjoy, but you feel guilty about, and so you don't share them with anyone. So I, like an idiot who loves just embarrassing herself to the whole wide world, I'm going to tell you uh, some of my guilty pleasures. You, the entirety of the internet. Please don't make fun of me. My first guilty pleasure that I'm going to talk about is not all that bad. I really enjoy young adult romance novels. And what I mean by that is like young adult novels that are just entirely about this girl falling in love with the boy at her new school and finding out that she is worth love after all. Here is a very small selection of my young adult romance novels. As you can see, I think I have like, what, three? Si yeah. Four Sarah Dessen books in this pile. There are two more on that bookshelf alone, and like a whole shelf dedicated to young adult romance novels. And better yet, if they're combined with like a dystopian society aspect. I can't handle myself when I realize how much I love these books because, especially with Sarah Dessen's novels, not trying to trash talk Sarah Dessen. Great author, good work, like publishing all these books, you're amazing. I buy all of them and read them but they have a tendency to go the exact same way every time where like the girl has kind of absent or uninterested parents and she just, she feels unloved, she feels like she doesn't have anything and then she meets this boy who is like all little not interested in her and that makes her want him. It's probably a horrible message actually, now that I'm thinking about the way I describe it. They're good books though, read them, they're fun. But I feel like I can predict the ending with like almost utmost perfection every time because obviously the girl's gonna fall in love with the guy and they're gonna live happily ever after, or at least until high school graduation. Once again, I wanna be very clear, not trash talking Sarah Destin at all. She does a great job. I love all of her books and I read all of them. My second guilty pleasure started very young and when I first started getting into video games, and that is Harvest Moon games. Harvest Moon is like basically a farming simulator. These are like my, these are like for GameCube and PlayStation 2. That's how old they are. These games go way back. Ah, uh, you basically, you what it says in here, start a farm, build a village, basically, you take over your farm, you as like a young guy or lady, take over like this old farm that you get left to by your parents or in some of the games like this old guy who you knew when you were little and you just farm and you <laughs> find all, you get all these animals and you get milk and eggs from your animals and you farm crops at different times of year and it's so idiotic! It's nothing but a farming simulator and you fall in love with someone from the town, you get married, and you have a baby who literally never grows up, they're just a toddler forever and it's incredible! How am I so addicted to these? I don't- I still play these. Totally on the reg. And if there's a new one out there, someone leave me a comment in the description below telling me if there's like new versions because the newest one I have are the GameCube ones. And like, if there's more, I want them. I want them all. And when I was younger, I would get super into these games. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, I would write out the different prices that crops would get me, what seasons they're good in and stuff like that. I had like a notebook of it until, you know, I got a little older and I realized the loveliness of the internet. Someone had already figured that out and put it on the internet for me to do. So now when I play them, I don't have to write it all down. I could just look on the like Harvest Moon Wiki, which I think is probably a thing. Try the games out. They're so charming. The art style is adorable. They're, they're Japanese, so obviously they're great. And you get to choose dogs! You get a dog! If there's a dog involved, I'm totally into it. And in one of the games I got a black cat, and that was the first black cat I ever named Jasmine, and my black cat Jasmine sitting right over there staring at me like I'm an idiot. So obviously these games had a huge impact on my life. And my third and final guilty pleasure that I'm actually going to admit to this camera today is the biggest one. And that is my horrific love of Hannah Montana. <laughs> Let me explain something to you. When I was in middle school, I was the co-president of the Hannah Montana fan club, and it consisted of my- f me? and my four friends. There were five of us in this club. And I was the co-president, and we also had co-vice presidents, and then one person who was just in the club. <laughs> Cause we were idiots. It was an absolutely charming and funny show, and I still have all the Hannah Montana CDs on my iPod or my iPhone currently, and I listen to them 
when I'm driving to work, every day they come on. I never skip those songs because they're great. I love them. I love Miley too. I love the it's great. You hated being Hannah Montana. That's cool. I love your new image. You do you, girl. But I love the Hannah Montana songs. They're so catchy. I know every single word. Guys, you don't understand how deep it goes. Like literally over here I have something to show you. I have the Hannah Montana movie. Um the Hannah Montana the movie was not that great. I'm going to be honest with you as someone who loved Hannah Montana. Not not the biggest fan of the movie, but I have it and I used to have like season 1 on DVD and I don't know where it went. I'm mad about that. But I love Hannah Montana. Okay, I don't want to say it like I watch it every day all the time. I thought it was a funny, great show. I like the music and I'm ashamed as anything and I'm bl blathering about it right now because I'm so nervous about telling the internet how much I love Hannah Montana because I'm such a loser. Guys. Please don't make fun of me. Actually, absolutely make fun of me. Make fun of me in the comments below. Just tell me how big of a loser I am. I already know. I know how big of a loser I am. It's not news to me. So now that I am sufficiently embarrassed and I'm pretty sure I'm blushing from being so embarrassed about telling people all of these things that I, I, I like, um, you can, you know, return the favor by telling me some of your horrible guilty pleasures down in the comments below if you want to, or just trash talk me and drag me because I am an absolute loser. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this trip into Andy Land. You can click right here to be sent to my last video, or you can click right down below to subscribe to my channel. Every subscriber brings a smile to my face, so just take a couple minutes every day, press subscribe if you really like the videos. Uh, don't forget to thumbs it up, because also all the thumbs up makes me smile, and that is just the highlight of my day, is <laughs> seeing thumbs ups on my stupid vlogs. And don't forget to share it with your friends if you think they'd like it, or if you think they have the same guilty pleasures and they need to see someone as big of a loser as they are. And I will see you guys next week with something else I'm sure as embarrassing for me. Bye guys. <laughs>